this is the jig that I used to cut the nailers to fit in between the gussets of the roof rafters to the shed that I'm turning into a home office for my wife. I had 13 nailers, so 26 repetitive cuts on this angle, so that's why I made a jig. The jig worked great, but some people might think it's a little bit dangerous. I was comfortable using it, but at the same time, I probably wouldn't ask somebody else to use it. So I've thought of a few changes to make it safer. I'll go ahead and show you how to do those. And even though these angles probably won't apply to your project, the same information could apply to any project that you're working on. This is the sacrificial fence that I use with the Capex saw in the shop here. The saw is set up so it doesn't cut all the way down. There's a little adjustment over here where you can make that adjustment. And as you can see, I've been using this sacrificial fence for a while now and it's seen better days. I'm going to replace it right after this little demonstration. So the way this jig works is I can make the first cut and because the saw isn't cutting all the way through, I'm left with a square end here. I can simply flip the piece over and make the second cut. Now this does require me holding the piece down with my left hand. Some people might not be comfortable with it. Like I said, I might not be comfortable asking somebody to do that. So two simple modifications to the jig will be to first hot glue this piece of scrap wood right here to help lock this, this piece in place. I'll use business cards as spacers so it's not too tight. And actually I should put the spacers there, add the hot glue. Okay, so that's locked in there now. Just less room for this piece to move around. Instead of holding this piece with my hand as I make the cut, because it is requiring a fair amount of pressure, I'll use a piece of scrap wood and cut in a bird's mouth. I'll cut this out on the bandsaw. After you cut the bird's mouth with the bandsaw, you can add a piece of sandpaper. That'll add a little gripping power. This, is an, this has got an adhesive on it. So I'll just trim that to size. Now I can slide the workpiece into the jig. And if the blade wants to pull the piece back a little bit, this is going to stop it. And again, instead of having my fingers here, which is a little bit closer to the blade. I can use this piece with the bird's mouth cut into it and the sandpaper to help grip the workpiece and then make the cut. Then I'll come over to the bandsaw to finish the cut. If you don't have a bandsaw, you could also use a pull saw. A few things I didn't cover because I jumped right into the making of the jig. The first step in making these nailers was to first find the angle once I figured all that out. Then I knew the length of the nailers. In this case, they're 13 and a half inches. So I cross cut all the boards at 13 and a half inches. And then I set the fence to rip them to width at an inch and five eighths heavy. That way I could get two nailers from each section of two by four. With these pieces cut, I can come back to the jig. Theoretically, I would have all of them cut to width and length and figure it out so I'm always going to have a square edge. That allows me to use the stop on the other side of the cut as well. 
and we'll just go ahead and cut it one more time. Okay, so that was just one of the parts to the shed transformation project that I'm working on this week. I wanted to make a video because I thought it was one of the more interesting parts and I think it's really smart to make a jig anytime you have to make repetitive cuts like that, even when it's framing, because your framing is so important when it comes time to do the trim work and the sheetrock work. If your framing is out of square and not level and out of plumb, it's going to make all the other work way more difficult and it's going to be hard to get really good results. So it's better to take the time, make the jig, and in this case I'm going to have a nice flat ceiling to add my first board, which is where my electrical will come through for the track lighting. So it all kind of makes sense. So a few other things that got done on the project was I framed out both windows, the windows that I made here in the shop a few weeks ago. I did install one of the windows. I'll be installing the other one tomorrow. I'm not gonna make a how to install a window video because that's a little bit out of my wheelhouse and I'm not really comfortable giving advice on things that, I'm, that I don't feel like I'm a professional at. When I did install the window, I referred to a video by the Perkins Brothers Builders. Uh, those guys are professional builders, so I thought that um, the advice that they give is good advice. I did add the uh, tape flashing around the window before installing the window. I also added silicone caulk, put the window in place and screwed right through the outside casing to attach the window. And then I'll go in on the inside and attach it to the framing from the inside. So it's not going anywhere. And again, it, this is a shed. Other things that got done were just some framing that had to be done on the gable ends and then insulation and a three mil vapor barrier in the entire building. What I'll be working on next week is shiplap on the roof and hopefully sheetrock and then paint. And I still haven't decided whether or not I'm going to just paint the floor of the shed or I might use a reclaimed hardwood floor, which uh, that I might make a full video on because that'll be interesting. If I do that, I'll get the wood from the real antique wood mill and uh, I really like those guys and I want to um, kind of highlight the flooring because it is going to make the space special. I want to remind you that before you start your next woodworking project, I hope that you'll check out my professional plans. I've got a ton of great furniture builds on my website and they all have free video tutorials right here on YouTube. So I hope that you'll click on the link in the description and check that out. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.